Hey everyone, welcome to worship today. It's good to be with you and good to worship with you. I am at the Parsonage and recording this. It was There was a little bit of sleet and I just didn't want to get stuck at the church. So I'm recording this from home and um, I know that'll be okay with you because you're here to worship, not necessarily focus on where I am, but I'm here to help you uh, grow closer to the love of God in Christ in these moments, and I'm glad you're worshiping with us today. Hey, one of the things that's going to be happening, and we'll continue to send these out daily messages about the uh, Lenten bags. We're going to give you uh, a bag that has some helpful tools to get through the Lenten season. One of those will be a sticker that's in the bag uh, that'll be, um, it'll have a uh, a Lenten cross on it, or an Ash Wednesday cross. Instead of us being able to put the sign of the cross on your forehead, you can do that virtually, as I'll lead you in a virtual Ash Wednesday service. But you can have this sticker, and you can wear it, and it'd be great if you post a picture of that on your social media site, or just send me a picture. And uh, that'll be a great way to, to mark yourself as a follower of Christ and uh, enter into the season of Lent. Uh, there'll be some other things in it, some communion cups where we'll celebrate communion together, um, some a devotional booklet, and one specifically for kids, those of you who are with children, um, also a palm cross, and just some other things in there that will hopefully be helpful to you as we go through the Lenten season. Uh, we're also getting ready to sign people up for our prayer vigil that will be on Monday, Thursday. So all those things are coming up. So just stay tuned for the emails and see the announcements in the weekly newsletter so we can make sure we can stay connected. You know, we're so close to having a vaccine for everybody. Uh, it's going to take a little time, uh, more time than we, we want, but we're getting there. And we want to continue to be safe, do everything we can to keep each other safe, but also stay connected. And one of the ways we can do that is enter into the season of Lent Ash Wednesday is the beginning, uh, February 17th, and uh, we just want to give you some tools and ways we can stay connected uh, together during Lent. So look for the information about picking up your Lenten uh, toolkit bag, and we can keep connected to one another. There are a lot of good things happening, and I appreciate everybody who's working hard at the church to make things happen, the staff, the volunteers, uh, the, the leaders, the officers of the church. Uh, next week, Dwayne's going to be preaching, and um, I hope uh, you'll tune in as well. And uh, just thank you for worshiping with us today. Let's have an opening prayer. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for worship, and thank you for being here and just being a part of, of, of your work at Chapelwood, Lord, is a blessing. And I pray for each person listening today, may they experience your grace and your goodness, the, the, the greatness of who you are in this worship moment. Thank you for everybody who's made this possible, and may we be a blessing as we lead worship today. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
everybody. I want to pray and lift up um, the family of Betty Bailey. Betty passed away this past week, and of course, her memorial service will be at a later date when things are a little safer. But please keep uh, children and family in your prayers as we uh, remember Betty. Uh, she did a lot for the church and the community, and um, we just really want to pray for the family and lift them up. And, and we're grateful to God for, for Betty's faithfulness throughout her years. The later years were difficult for her, but we, we thank the Lord for the many years, all her life, as she was faithful to, to Jesus. Um, we continue to pray for Doc Erickson, too, and the loss of Shirley. Difficult time to lose a loved one. And we are, are grateful. We know where Shirley is, and of course, but that, that's still hard for the, the family who's here. So we lift them up today in our prayers as well. There are many on your prayer list. I hope you'll take a look at that and, and keep all of those in your prayers today. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, as we come to you this morning, we thank you for the blessings of, of being able to worship, even if it's online. It's good to be in a fellowship, a part of a family, where we're marked by the love of Christ in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us and guiding us as a church family. We thank you for vaccines and medical professionals, people who lead, people who serve, people who are on the front lines and doing so much to protect us and help us be well. We lift up to you, Lord, the people we've named, those on our hearts today. There are so many who are hurting. Father, forgive us where we've fallen short, we've committed sins, and not done what you've called us to do. Forgive us and make us new. Thank you, Father, for this day. Help us not to take advantage of your grace, but to understand how life-changing it really can be. We're grateful, Lord, for each other, for the church family, for the broader church family around the world. We pray for this world and its hurts and pains, and we ask, Lord, that you help us and heal our land and heal this world, and may we grow closer to one another and closer to you. We're so grateful. Lord, we're grateful to be your people, to be marked by you as people who are on the way, who are part of the truth and the light and love of Jesus Christ. We remember him today. We join together saying the words that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey everyone, I'm at the Parsonage tonight. I uh, was going to record the sermon at the church. A little bit of sleet out there, just wanted to be 100% sure I didn't get trapped at the church tonight. So I wanted to record here at the Parsonage. Thank you for being here. It's Sunday morning now when you hear this, uh, February 7th, and I'm glad you're worshiping with us today. I want to share with you some more of the story of Abram, and this is specifically the story of Abram becoming Abraham when God uh, called him and, and, and let him know he would be a father of many. When Abram was 99 years old, this is chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down. And God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, 
I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. I wonder about Abram if he was ready to change his business card from Abram to Abraham. You know how easy it is for us now to uh, change out something like stationery or business cards. We can order what we need just like that. But Abram, I wonder what he thought. We read last week about Hagar and how she experienced God calling her and she claimed that he was El Roy, uh, the God who sees, E L. R-O-I. In this passage, we hear about God being El Shaddai, the great God, God Almighty. Um, and I think about that and that experience with Abram, if he really believed that. Here he is, 99 years old, and he, he he's being told by God that he is going to be the father of many people, of many nations, and there will be kings, and, and God is establishing this covenant with him. And, and yet, he understands the importance of this moment. He understands what 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 God is up to, and he, he he's not sure about it all, and he's not really ready for it. But he but he he remains faithful. Um, you know, I think about uh, things we like uh, as we age. We we become loyal to certain products. I like a certain kind of coffee. Uh, community coffee. In fact, I'm holding, I've got it in my hand right here. Oh, see that? Community coffee. I like that coffee. I don't know why. I tried it once. I liked it. I stay with it. I, I drink it all the time. Uh, some people like Folgers. Some people like Starbucks coffee. Some people like Jittery. You know, there's just all kinds of different coffees. But as you age, sometimes you get loyal to a certain brand. Now, much more than a consumer product, uh, much more than something you consume, God is is someone you experience and understand that he has created you, he has sustained you, he redeems you, he empowers you, he uplifts you. He is God Almighty, El Shaddai. And I wonder for you this morning, um, as, as Abram was challenged by God and said, this is what I'm going to do for you. And you know, he struggled with it and had trouble, you know, really thinking this was going to happen. He, he goes on and says, he, he laughs. He, he just kind of, like, you've got to be kidding. You know, this is, you're going to do this. You're going to make me a father of many nations. But it's not like he's laughing at God. He, he's, he's just, overwhelmed by what God is going to do. And I wonder what it is in your life right now that is an El Shaddai moment where God needs to do something great in your life. Maybe it's a relationship that's broken. Maybe it's uh, not being able to stretch out that paycheck like you want it to go for the whole month. And, and maybe it's a, a wayward child. Maybe it's um, a strained friendship. No matter what it is, what what is it that only God can help you with? You've tried it all on your own, and, and you just can't make it on your own. You know, this story goes on and talks about uh, circumcision and and talks about the mark of, of young men on their eighth day being circumcised, and that's how they will know uh, that they're uh, his people. And... Um, in so many ways, we we now symbolize the mark of, of those who profess Christ and those who are part of the Christian family as people who are baptized. We symbol One of the saddest things to me about uh, the pandemic has, has been, of course, not being able to see everybody all the time, not being able to be with people you want to be with, especially when they're hurting. But not having baptisms, that's been a tough thing because we have to distance ourselves and remain safe. And I think about that a lot. Baptisms are really special. And I look forward to the day when we're able to get back together and perform some of those uh, sacraments of baptism. Because something amazing is experienced at baptism. Um, the, the person being baptized as a mark on them, a symbol on them, that they are loved by God. 
They are created in his image. They are a person of worth. They are a person who has received the grace and, and, and God is working in their heart. And we celebrate that. Those of, of us and, and those who are part of our family of faith, who are believers, those who are baptized into the faith, they are important. And we want to get back to where we can celebrate that mark, that distinction of who we are, whose we are, of God's people. I look forward to that day. All of us are, are given a challenge to understand that God is truly great. And we need to look to him now in these difficult times and say, God, I cannot handle this on my own. Only the greatness, the goodness of God can, can change this situation, can make a real difference. So we come to a table of communion today, accepting what has been done for us, the one who has become our Redeemer, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who made the relationship right with us, between us and God. Uh, we come receiving his, his body and his blood and knowing that we're loved despite the challenges of the times and the difficulties of these days. We know we're loved by Jesus Christ. And I pray that for you, that you would receive these elements and in your home or, or wherever you're watching today, um, just know that there is a greatness and a goodness of God who was faithful to Abraham, who was faithful to Sarah, who continues to be faithful to his people today. He's always with us, no matter what we're going through. He's with the church. He's with us today and he will be with you as you receive the body and blood of Christ. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for these moments to come together and remember what has been done for us in Christ. We are so grateful for the greatness and goodness of your love. Help us, Lord, to believe. Lead us through these days. May we know of your grace as we receive again the body and blood of Christ. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll receive the elements in just a moment. At this time, prepare to receive the elements of Holy Communion. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So remember what Christ has done for you and offer yourself in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. Remember that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. We pray for God to pour out his Holy Spirit on those listening to this service, and on the gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The body of Christ, broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Eternal God, 
We give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go to the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.